Moving on to bout number two from Uzbekistan. We have Orzebek Shayamov in the red corner. And in the blue corner from Ireland, John Nevin, 22 years old. John ranked number four in the world. So Orzebek Shayamov, as the boxers make their way to ring B, Gerardo Poggi from Argentina, Poggi would be the referee. The judges, Pizarro, Sidi Yacoub, Wang Sinar, and Alvarado for this bantamweight matchup. As we stated, Shyamov, he was in the 2006 Ayuba Junior World Championships, placed seventh. Then in 2009 at the Ayuba President's Cup right here in Baku, Azerbaijan, he placed first. He was a sixth place participant in the Asian Games in 2010 in Guangzhou Province, China. And earlier this year, at the Governor's Cup in St. Petersburg, Russia, he placed second. Yesterday, in the round of 16, he beat Gojan Vekislav of Moldova, who was himself ranked number five, by a score of 13 to eight. So Orzebek has really shown a lot of improvement over the years and progress. John Joe Nevin, number four in the world, yesterday beat Atkandali Dorinjabu of Mongolia on a decision of total scoring after they drew 18-18 after three rounds. So they went to the total punches, total output, and he eked out an extremely close decision. So he's also a World Series of Boxing participant, John Joe Nevin. So let's see how these two fare. Shyamov from Uzbekistan in the red, Nevin from Ireland in the blue. Both boxers boxing in the orthodox stance. You can see they're leading with their left feet and their left hands, the jabbing hand, the right hand in the back ready to unleash the bomb when the opportunity presents himself. And there's Nevin showing some good footwork. He's light on his feet, very energetic here as he should be. It's early in the first round and he's young. Very athletic, Shyamov giving up a few inches in height, as you could see right there. It's clear on the profile. Nevin has a, a few inches, perhaps two or three, over his opponent, and that's going to make for a tactical advantage, as Shyamov is more likely than not going to need to stay in close. And you could see it is Shyamov indeed. Looks like his game plan is to press the action, because he's going to need to stay inside. Remember, when you're the shorter boxer with the shorter arms, you give up a few inches in reach, which means that you need to get closer to your opponent to hit him than he does to you. And as a result, you need to get in there using your hands and your feet so that you can get close enough to land those punches. Of course, while doing so, you're crowding your taller opponent's punches as he's unable to really get full extension when you're up that close and therefore can't get the maximum impact on his own punches. So again, Shyamov's going to want to get inside. Nevin's going to want to stay on the outside and box him using those long arms to jab, as we saw Luke Campbell do in the last bout. So there's one minute left in round number one. Shyamov continuing to stalk his opponent while Nevin continues to stay light on his feet as he stays around the ring, and the referee Looks like he's urging Nevin to box, which is a good call because while Nevin has been staying at a distance, he hasn't really been throwing any punches through this round. And that's not what he's here to do. He's here to score points. He's here to win. And the only way to win is to score points or to knock out your opponent, both of which require you to throw punches. Shaimov continuing to press the action. Now Nevin picks up his pace a little bit. Nevin even looking now to stand there and trade. Big looping right hand by Nevin, followed by a left. Both of them deflected, not clean scores. And there's a left and a right by Nevin. And Shaimov just looking for his opportunity, throwing wild left and right. You see how his arms are just too short to connect with Nevin from that distance. He's going to need to get in close. He's now got Nevin against the ropes. Not a place Nevin wants to be. And Nevin knows that, and he quickly escaped that predicament. Precarious one at that. So 
After round number one, the Uzbeki boxer takes the lead with a score of seven to four. He was certainly the more active boxer and he was able to get in there as you could look from round one. The left hand by Nevin, which was partially blocked to the right rib cage of Shaimov. Shaimov himself throwing a quick snappy left jab in there and chasing down his man. Wonderful job by the Azerbaijani Boxing Federation as well as Aiba to organize this event. Again, a lot of countries, a lot of boxers, a lot of boxing going on, a lot of statistics and logistics, production issues, and it's been going off flawlessly. So kudos to all involved in organizing this wonderful event here in Baku, Azerbaijan. And round two underway as Nevin continues now his onward march. He's now pushing the action in round two. I'm sure his corner told him, now you're the guy down on three. It's an interesting change of events here. In round one, the taller boxer was going to let the shorter boxer bring it to him. And as soon as the shorter boxer went up on the scores by three points, in round two, now the sense of urgency for the taller boxer to actually press the action. So it's interesting to see what a change of events can do. It still plays into Shaimov's hand because now Nevin's going to have to get inside or press the action. Shaimov may have a better opportunity now to use his footwork to avoid some of the onslaught that Nevin may bring while at the same time scoring punches of his own. And here even Nevin continuing to push forward. So this is very much a tactical matchup, a stylistic matchup. And there's a nice left hand by Nevin, a jab that snaps back the head of Shaimov. So that was a clean punch. And Shaimov is going to want to keep his hands a little higher to prevent that jab from coming in. It's a snappy, fast, straight jab that Nevin has. He should be using it more often. And not only more often, he should be doubling and tripling it up. And not only the frequency, but also the rate, the iterations within a, an exchange or combinations, if you will, of jabs. There's no reason why he can't throw a three-punch combo, all being jabs. Get Shaimov a little off balance, a little offset, and then come back with the big right hand. These one punch at a time exchanges by Nevin are not going to serve him as well as throwing more combination punching. And Nevin is going to need to keep it, his hands up a little higher to avoid those jabs from scoring clean points for Nevin. So they push off in the center of the ring, and. Action is well underway here, just under a minute left in round number two. You're here at the Haydar Aliyev Sports Complex in Baku. It's the 2011 Aiba World Championships qualifying event, the first one for the London Olympic Games next summer. All the boxers you're watching here today have already qualified by having progressed to this round, this being the quarterfinal round. Now you see Shaimov standing his ground in the center. A nice right hand to the ribs by Nevin, followed up with a right counter punch by Shaimov, and then a left. So Shaimov starting to press the action here. Just 10 seconds left, and Nevin fighting for his dear life here because he realizes he was down by a few in the first, and if he continues to stay down on the scorecards at the end of two, he is going to have no choice but to go to the hilt full speed on round three and sure enough the Uzbeki boxer has maintained a two-point advantage so the Irishman has been able to cut the lead that the Uzbeki boxer had by one however he's still down by two with a score of 11 to 9 here as we make our way to the third round and you take a look at the action from round two there's a snapping left left right combo by Shyamov and Luke, excuse me, John Joe Nevin in his corner getting some final instructions here. Just 20 seconds left before round three shall begin. You see the scoring there round by round. This is a men's bantamweight bout, 56 kilograms.
And we're back in action here for the third and final round. The lunging lead right hand by Shimov wasn't expected by Nevin, and Nevin's going to really going to see the sense of urgency now as Nevin continues to press. He's got to come up two points and then more to take the lead, all while keeping Shimov from landing one score. So he's got his work cut out for him, does John Joe Nevin. Nice left hand right down the middle. There's that jab through the guard of Shimov that we spoke of earlier. Again, Nevin is going to want to continue that jab. Look how Shimov's hands are down. It's a great opportunity. Nevin's going to want to use his feet if he needs to, deceivingly, to get that jab in. Perhaps Shimov feels he could see that jab coming and slip it. Well, not if Nevin gets creative. He could use his feet to get inside. He could also do feints like that. However, he's going to want to feint the other way. He may feint the right hand and then follow it up with the jab, or feint the jab and then throw it with the right. But just the feint without the follow-up punch doesn't score you any points. Although he may be thinking down the road like a chess match, one or two moves ahead. He throws the feint once, doesn't throw the punch. Throws another feint without the punch. Maybe get Shimov thinking that the feint is only the feint. And then perhaps on the third time, throw the feint with the punch behind it. Maybe catch Shimov off guard. He could be thinking that, although he's only got a minute and a half to employ that tactic. So if that's what he was thinking, he's going to need to get on that horse quickly. And as the strap of the headgear gets readjusted by Nevin's corner, we're just at the halfway point of this third and final round. I don't yet see where Nevin has caught up, at least not so overtly. May have snuck a point or two in there, but I don't think I've seen that. So Nevin's going to really need to press the action. He may want to try going to the body, maybe throw a right hand to the body while Shimov's hands are up like that. A point scored to the body is worth as much weight as a point scored to the head. Doesn't matter where he gets the points from, he just needs to get them. Nice feint, and there it is. We spoke of that earlier. There was the feint by the right, and he followed up with the left, and it seemed to have worked. It looks like he actually scored a point there, and he followed it up with another right hand, so perhaps Nevin was on to something there. There's the feint again, and another. He's ripping the left to that right temple of Shimov, but Shimov had his hand up for that, was able to block it. A nice left hand right through the guard by, Shime, uh, by Nevin, so perhaps Nevin is starting to cut this lead away, and there was another right hand that may have scored, so this one could look to be very close on the scorecards. Nevin keeps up this work rate. Now looks like Shimov seems to be the aggressor. Perhaps he feels he needs to score some more points. The referee going to caution Nevin, and boxing resumes right here in the center of the ring. 20 seconds left. Tension so thick you could cut it with a knife, and a nice lead right hand by Shimov. He's bringing it on now. Left hand by Nevin, a double. There's the double jab we spoke of. Do it again. Throw that right. One last score, perhaps, before the final bell. Nope. Wasn't meant to be. We shall see, though. This could be very close. Very exciting bout so far. Here in ring B, men's bantamweight quarterfinals, Orzebek Shaimov and John Nevin. See the corner of John... Perhaps a look of consternation. I'm not entirely certain whether he's going to come away with this victory. He's already got a spot to London, but of course he'd love to medal, and perhaps better than medal, to gold. Take first place here at the World Championships. He's going to have to get through this right here. Let's wait and see. And he gets it, John Joe Nevin. After being down the first two rounds, he ekes out a two-point victory. Very impressive. So it looks like those faint tactics, the doubling and tripling of the jabs, the first round of tactically avoiding and feeling out his opponent, all seem to work in his favor. Very impressive. John Joe Nevin will move on to the semifinals and keep Ireland's hopes alive for another world champion. Congratulations as we get ready now for the third bout of the 
afternoon. Also in the men's bantamweight, 56 kilograms. Just looking at some final footage here from this last bout, as you can see, spirited action indeed.